Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Maliki Yomadeen As-Salatu As-Salam Ala Muhammad Rasulullah Wa Mustafa Ameen Wa La Alihi Wa Sahbihi Ajma'in Ashadu An La Ilaha Ilallah Wa Ahdula Ashriq Allah Ashadu An Muhammadin Abduhu Wa Rasuluh Qala Ta'ala Fi Al-Quran Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Wa Al-Asri Inna Al-Insana Lifi Khusri إلى الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر الحمد لله آمين. All praise and thanks and glorification is due to Allah because the praise belongs to Allah. He has no partners. He has no associates. He has no ancestors. He has no descendants. Almighty Allah, who subhanahu wa taala azza wa jal has no mother, no father, no daughter, no wife, no son. He rules the universe alone. And I witness that Muhammad ibn Abdullah. Prayers and peace be upon him. He is the messenger of Allah and the seal of the prophets. Almighty Allah, who subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, tells us in his perfect book, coming from his perfect, which are, include his perfect words, the Quran, he says that uh, he swears by time. He swears by time, and time is created by Allah. Only Allah has the authority and the permission, I shouldn't even say permission, the ability and the right to swear by something that's created. We can't do that. We can only swear to Allah. Wallahi, we swear by Allah. But Allah has the power and the right to swear by anything in creation. So he swears by time. He's so sure. He's so certain. He swears by time. He said, surely. Well, Asra, in that insanity, people are going to be losers. The people, the human being, the human race are going to lose. They're going to lose. They're not going to win. With the, uh, with the exception of those who believe and work deeds of righteousness. And then remind and influence and encourage each other to the reality, which is Allah. And then remind and influence and encourage each other to be consistent with patience. That's sabr. Sabr is, doesn't just mean to be patient like I'm going to wait. Sabr in the Quranic language means to be consistent with patience no matter what the circumstance is. Whether times are good or times are bad. Whether in wealth or or in poverty, whether in sickness or in health, whether in rain or in sunshine, whether in cold or heat, no matter what, we this is summer, and we have to remind each other because we're going to forget the outstanding characteristic, the outstanding common characteristic of human beings, which in the, in the Quranic language is insane, is that we have to be reminded because we're going to forget and so Allah tells us in the surah, in one of the shortest surahs of the Quran, and a short ayat in that short surah, what the wasaf bil haq, and remind, influence, encourage each other to the reality which is Allah, what the wasaf is sabr, and remind, influence, because we're going to forget. We worry sometimes. We forget sometimes. We get stressful. We get overheated with worry, overcome with the stress. So we have to remind each other to be consistent with patience, not just when everything is fine, because that's when you usually hear Muslims say, Alhamdulillah, things, Alhamdulillah, all right, my bills are paid, I got a job, Alhamdulillah, I found me a nice wife, I found me a nice husband, Alhamdulillah, everything is fine, I'm healthy, Alhamdulillah, I didn't get COVID, I got my shots, Alhamdulillah. But when things are rough, that's when we're being tested. And Allah tells us in the Quran, in Surah the Ankh book, after Alif Lamim, He said, do people actually think they're going to be left alone on saying they believe without being tested? So sometimes we don't know what our test is. We think that our test sometimes is something bad that happens in our life. But Allah is the perfect tester. So our test doesn't always come from something that's terrible. Some of the most vicious and some of the most trying and some of the most uh, 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 heart-wrenching tests come with things are going very well. Because then we find out what we, what, who we really are. We find out more about ourselves. 
Need to order a food. Need to order a food in the Quran means so we can get to know each other, but you don't get to know somebody else till you get to know yourself. So Allah tells us in the Quran, subhanAllah, that we have to be very, very careful that we don't continue to put our emphasis on created things. That's shirk. No matter how you look at it, no matter how you might dress it up and polish it up and tie a little cute little pink ribbon over it, if you're focusing on anything in creation other than Allah, that's flat out shirk. Undiluted, polyunsaturated, straight, no chaser, shirk. If your focus is on anything other than Allah, that's, that's assigning a partner to him. See we, see, we get it twisted sometimes because we try to play with words and say, well, you know, I, I always say la ilaha illallah, but, 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 the, the, but anti-shirk doesn't just come with things that you say. Anti-shirk or being against shirk mostly comes with things that we do and things that we refuse to do. SubhanAllah. So we have to be very careful because on the day of judgment, things that we didn't think had the capacity to speak are going to be given by Allah the ability to speak. Things that we thought that, that, that are insignificant, like our little fingertips. Allah tells us in the Quran that even our fingers will bear witness against us. SubhanAllah. Yes. So, brothers and sisters, we have to be careful because on that day, on that dreadful day, Every anything that we had the blatant audacity to put in front of Allah, to even put or try to be as equal with Allah, or even try to legitimize a comparison to Allah, subhanAllah, Allah is going to give that thing, whatever it is, tangible, intangible, breathing, or solid, subhanAllah, the ability to speak. Allah says in the Quran, Elder Bilahim and Shaitan Rajim, Yom Tashurum, Jom Yom Thum, Nakulu, Liladina, Ashrakum, Makana, Makanakum, Antum Washuraka, Uhum, Bazayanel Bainahum, Wakala Shuraka, Uhum, Makuntum Yaatin Tabudum. And one day, one day, one day we gather them all together. Then we will say to those who join God with Allah, to your place, you and those you join as partners. We will separate them and then their so-called partners will say, this is a lot talking. This is not scholarly opinion. This is Allah talking. And the partners will say, it was not us that you worship. They're going to be in denial. All the things and all the people and all the enjoyments and all our material accomplishments that we had the blatant audacity to put in front of Allah, Allah is going to give them the ability to speak. It was not us that you worship. They're going to deny it. It was not us. Although we had the, 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 attempt, the tendency and the inclination to put our trust, put our hope, put our focus, put our attention in material things. And the, and the worst part about it is sometimes it's things that we actually prayed for, that we prayed to Allah before, before because we, we worship Allah. And we went to Allah in prayer, in dua, subhanAllah. While we were fasting, in sajda, crying and begging and moaning and weeping in the middle of the night, and then he would answer our dua, and then we would begin to worship the things that he gave us, subhanAllah. Allah says he follows up, inshallah. He follows up, he says, وَكَفَى بِاللَّهِ شَهِدًا بَيْنَنَا وَبَيْنَكُمْ إِن كُنَّا عَنْ إِبَادَتِكُمْ Enough is Allah for a witness between us and you. We certainly knew nothing of your worship of us. They're going to deny it. See, you know, we all, we all know that shaitan is going to deny it. 
We read that all the time. Satan is going to say, well, don't blame me. Blame yourself. I only called you. I had no power over you. I only called you and you came. We think that Iblis and Shaitan is going to be the only one that's going to be having that type of dialogue. But anything and everything that we put focus on in this life, as religious people, particularly Muslims, we're talking to Muslims right now, but, but basically as religious people, anything that we put focus on is going to say the same thing. We didn't know about you, you, you worshiping us. What, the, what, what power do they have? Well, how are they going to defend you? They wouldn't even be a good public defender in, a, in, the, in these modern courts. It'd be terrible. SubhanAllah. You'd be standing there all alone when we thought that it was important during our lifetime, when the things that we put focus on, the things that we were blessed by Allah to accumulate, the things that the, the, the du'as and the, sal and the salawat that Allah answered, these things that we thought is going to be in our corner, we're going to look around. They're not going to be there to defend us. It's so, we think it's so important to enjoy the things that we have in this material world until after it's over, till the smoke clears and we pass away and our body goes back to the earth and our, our, our soul goes back to Allah and our deeds go into a book that belongs to Allah. And it's all over. It's all a thing of the past. That this life is a fleeting, fleeting experience. Isn't that sounds familiar? Isn't that what we try to tell our young children who are overcome with peer pressure? We try to tell them, those of us, look, I've been there. I used to do that when I was your age. It's not going to mean anything after a little while. Isn't that what we try to tell them? It, it, it hurt, you know, our own medicine don't taste so good, does it? Hmm? I don't I don't taste what I don't, don't taste good, does it? Because we're trying to convince our children that the peer pressure doesn't mean anything. It's not that important. Because they're going to blink their eyes in, this, in middle school. They're going to blink their eyes and they're going to be graduating from high school. Blink their eyes, they'll be out and looking at one ass, trying to pay, walk the streets looking for a job. And the friends that they were trying to impress in school elementary and middle school and high school and then and on the on the block in the hood with the homeboys and homegirls they're not going to be there because nothing's going to matter anymore what they thought about us doesn't matter anymore the shoes the expensive shoes that they talked us into buying for them that they don't deserve is not going to matter anymore the, the clothing styles the impress it's not going to matter because they're going to blink their eyes and the friends they're trying to impress are either going to be dead in jail, in a hospital, in a nursing home, in a rehab facility, and some of them might be doing okay, but they don't have a law. And that's what we have to try to instill upon our children and remind ourselves what to us of Bill Hawk and remind, influence, encourage each other that only a law is worth worshiping. There is no God except a law. You can call it a God if you want to. You can treat it like a God if you want to. It's like putting a tuxedo on a, on a, a, on a penguin and think that he's dressed up. Or put peacock feathers on a duck and think that changes what he is. SubhanAllah. Brothers and sisters, what Allah created something to be is what it is. And time flies quicker than we can think. And Allah revealed the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in a hadith Qudsi. He says that he is time. Allah is time. The Muslims and all religious people must be careful to put our focus on only being validated by Allah instead of being validated by the creation of Allah. We try to get too much attention on the things that Allah blessed us with. <laughs> on the things that he's given us out of his mercy. Out of his mercy, most of the blessings that we enjoy are blessings that Allah gave us out of his mercy. Many things we didn't even ask for. We didn't ask for our sight, he gave it to us. The very first thing Allah gives the baby in the womb of the mother is the hearing, the hearing, and then the intellect. You know, the ability to think. 
after the hearing. SubhanAllah. But what do we do with this beautiful first blessing that we got? Are we listening to, the, to what Allah has revealed to us? Are we paying attention, but are we listening with our hearts? SubhanAllah. We have to be very careful that we don't put our focus on the creation instead of Allah. That is shirk. It's so easy to point the fingers at people who worship idols and make statues and people who call on gods other than Allah. It's not just a matter of someone calling Allah by a different name. Muslims don't have too much of a hang up with language except in our salat, right? Outside of our salat, we don't have a hang up with language. It's okay to say God, master, Lord, my creator. It's all right. There's no hang up. Those are the names of Allah translated. But yet, how we view and how we perceive the presence of Allah, when we stand in Qiyam, we're acknowledging the presence of Allah. When we bow in Ruku, we're showing respect. That is taqwa. We're showing respect for the presence of Allah. When we bow to Almighty Allah, but we have to be careful because some of us are bowing and showing more respect for the, for the material things. That is shirk. And Muhammad the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam teaches us, he said, uh, 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 the most dangerous shirk is not the obvious ones, even though it's all bad, is what, what is called shirk and khafi. Shirk and khafi is called the hidden shirk, the tiny little things that we do that we don't realize is shirk. And the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said that, that, that that type of shirk, that shirk and khafi will sneak up on the believers, sneak up on my ummah like a black ant crawling on a black rock in the middle of the night. We won't see it coming. We, we, we're more concerned with people. We, we have to lose that. Let, let's, let's see if we can divorce ourselves, brothers and sisters. If we're really going to enjoy monotheism, if we're really going to internalize and enjoy the beauty of Islam, we need to divorce ourselves from being so concerned with material things and what people do and what people can uh, provide for us. We get excited. Check yourself out. This is, this, we gonna, this is really like a self-analysis. We get excited by invitations from people. There'd be government officials, movie stars, celebrities, you know, or some, or some brother or sister that we really, really look up to, you know. We get excited by their invitation. Come on over to my house. Come take a ride in my car. Come go on a vacation with me and my family. I want you to spend some time with us at the park. SubhanAllah. We get excited. But Allah is inviting us to his paradise. And then what does he do daily? Allah invites us to stand in his countenance. That's in, we stand in the presence of Allah. When we make salat, he is inviting us to pray to him, even though it's an order to Muslims, five times per day, five times a day. Not five prayers a day, because that makes us think that we can combine them all together as a regular habit. Five prayer, five salat salawat a day, five times per day. He invites us. He invites the brothers to his masjid. Muhammad the Prophet said that the, uh, that the brothers should begin and end their day in the masjid. And, it's, and he said the, the masjid should also be a center of the Muslims' activities. And if your women ask to come to the masjid, let them come. SubhanAllah. But we get excited about human beings inviting us to things. But we don't get excited about Allah. We're worried about consequences from people. If we don't do something that someone has expected us to do, or hired us to do, or paid us to do, or charged us to do, we get worried about their consequences, but we're not worried about the consequences of Allah. What is my, what is my proof? Sometimes we're not worried about how late we are for Salat. We're not worried, oh, I got, I got time. We walk lazily to, to the congregational prayer and don't really care what time we walk in. The congregational, we just delay it because we feel like it. SubhanAllah, yes. We're not worried about the consequences. Hmm? 
We don't worry about it. We, we, Allah, as one of the five pillars of Islam, is to perform Hajj if we're healthy and, and, and able to. But there are millions of Muslims who won't admit it, but they would rather take a vacation. I'll, I'll go on a cruise. I'll go to Disney World and say that they can't go to Hajj because it's too expensive. We don't worry about the consequences to, of Allah, the maker, sustainer of the universe, the owner of everything that exists, the creator of you, creator of me and everything in this beautiful universe. We're not worried about his consequences, but we're concerned about the consequences of people. We get hired on a job and we dare run late. They say be there at nine o'clock, we're there at 855. When I was doing business in South Korea, the Muslims, uh, not the Muslims, I'm sorry, the, the people in South Korea, they love working so much. They line up one and two hours ahead of time outside the gate waiting for it to unlock so they can go, go to work. Some of us, what we work, we so work, we set two, three alarms, snooze alarms to make sure we get up in time because we don't want to disappoint our boss. Our human being boss that lives and drinks and sleeps and is going to die and drinks water and gets hungry just like we do. And we're concerned about his consequences. With the expectations of rewards or praise, we're more concerned about the expectation of rewards and praise from people than we are about the expectation of rewards from Almighty Allah, the Ajah the nitma of Allah subhanAllah, the blessings from Almighty Allah, the barakah. We, we're not concerned about that. Our love for money, oh, this is going to pinch us. Our love for money most times supersedes, though we dare admit it. We're not going to admit it. No one admit it, at least not in front of people. You may go look in the mirror in your private life and say, yeah, maybe I need to straighten up. But we demonstrate our love for money more than we demonstrate our love for Allah. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is reported to have said, if you raise your hands in dua and ask Allah for something, and, but you're not willing to interrupt your sleep at night to get up and ask him for it, then you really don't want it. That doesn't mean he's not going to give it to you. He's just saying you just don't really want it. But we love money so much that no matter what time our boss tells us to be at work, we're going to get up out of our bed and get there. No matter what time it is, especially if we've been unemployed for a while, our love for money will make us get up early, make us show up on time, make our love for money will make us work late. When Juma is over, around the world, many of us Muslims, many of us Muslims will finish our salat and rush back to the dunya like the master is on fire. We don't take our time to, to, to talk to Allah and tell him what we need. Do a couple extra rakas upon Allah. The prophet, peace be upon him, said if you perform, if you offer Juma prayer in the masjid, you should do four rakas before you leave. If you don't have time to do it, four rakas, then if you have to do your rakas later somewhere else, you just do two. But you, you take your time with Allah to demonstrate that I want Allah to pay me because his pockets is a whole lot deeper than the, than the employer who hired me. If I'm worried about some money, and it's a shame that some Muslims are so worried about money, they won't even go to you, my prayer. But for money, oh yeah, no problem. Get up early, show up on time, work late. I don't want to work late. For Allah, praying, subhanAllah, making dua, crying to Allah, crying because out of, out of, out of our guilt, Crying because we came up short out of embarrassment in front of Allah because we haven't demonstrated how much we appreciate him and all of his blessings upon Allah. The best reward, brothers and sisters, is from Allah. The worst punishment is from Allah. The consequence, the worst consequences is from Allah. It's worse, more lonely abandonment. The abandonment, if people abandon you, if your wife, your husband, your children, your boss, if all the Muslims in the masjid get mad at you and stop talking to you, there's nothing worse than Allah abandoning you. 
And Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was was told by Allah, and it was and he meant and it was a, a revelation. He said, "I have not abandoned you. You're doing everything you're supposed to do. Don't just keep doing it. I have not abandoned you just because you didn't hear from me. I have not abandoned you. You're doing everything you're supposed to do. He's talking to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, but the message is for us. If our conscience is clear, then we're doing everything that we're supposed to do." We're doing our best to pray, Kitab al Makuta, pray on, on exact calculated timings. In the most perfect manner, with good kushu, subhanAllah. We clean ourselves up, subhanAllah. Yes. If we're doing the best we can to have an excellent fast, whether it's an obligatory fast or voluntary fast, subhanAllah, do it, do it the best you possibly can. Not just fasting from food, but fasting from anything that is unnecessary, subhanAllah. Then you can expect, and, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made a dua, he said, I expect your reward and I fear your punishment. So dear brothers and sisters, we pray Almighty Allah who subhanahu wa ta'ala azawajal will grant us a new lease in life and he will save us and protect us all from shirk, from worshiping and paying too close attention and focusing on those things that he has created. We pray to Allah and we bear witness that la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah rabbil alameen, ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, maliki yawm ad-deen. Assalatu wa salam ala Muhammad Rasulullah wa Mustafa Ameen wa ala'ali wa sahbihi ajma'in. Shadu an la ilaha illallah wa atullah shirikullah. Shadu anna Muhammad an abdu rasulullah. O Allah, please send your prayers and peace upon Muhammad, upon his wives, upon his children, upon his grandchildren, upon his righteous companions, all of them. Ajma'in. And we pray almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he will bless us all. To, to be more appreciative of the deen that we claim we have expect, accepted and we and we will learn how to see each other the way that we want Almighty Allah to see us. Kulu Ameen. Ameen. SubhanAllah. Yes, brothers and sisters, uh, the, the, the testimony of Kalima Shahada came of La Ilaha Illallah is more than just words. Allah's reward, Allah's reward doesn't just come, it's not limited to how we say La Ilaha Illallah. <coughs> It's a good start. La ilaha illallah. Yes, it's a good start. Someone on their deathbed can say la ilaha illallah and they can be protected from the hellfire. But our total judgment doesn't rely on what we say because we have to live la ilaha illallah. We have to live it. We have to demonstrate it to Allah and let our, let our own soul feel it. When we say la ilaha illallah and then we also witness Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, ashadu an la Muhammad al abduhu wa rasulu. What does it mean we say, ashadu an Muhammad al abduhu wa rasulu? That means that we want to try to perfect our worship of Allah. Like Muhammad the Prophet, peace be upon him, perfected his worship of Allah. We want to imitate him. We want to imitate him because Allah will, will tell him on the day of judgment, Ya Rasulullah. See, Allah respects him so much, he calls him by his title, Ya Rasulullah. Brother Abdul or Sister Khadija or, or Brother Qasim or whoever was trying to imitate you on earth. Put in a good word for them. SubhanAllah, yes. But we but we contradictory because we, we use the blessings that Allah gives us to separate ourselves from him. How many of us have prayed for a spouse? Oh Allah, oh Allah, give me a good husband. Oh Allah, give me a beautiful Muslim wife that covers. And Allah answers your dua, and then you sit down with your spouse watching TV and let Salat go by. You just got finished asking for the blessing that you're using to, to disobey Allah. If the shoe fits, wear it. How many of us have raised our dua after we find a husband or a wife? So, oh Allah, bless us with beautiful children so we can raise them in Islam. Bless us with beautiful, <laughs> healthy children. Allah bless you with baby, beautiful, handsome boys and beautiful girls. And then we miss prayer going on a vacation with our family. My favorite, they need family time. You know, we, we, miss, we miss our prayers because our children that we pray for grow up and become successful athletes. So we would rather go to a basketball tournament or a football game 
than it makes a lot. It's our car, no matter what it is, we have to be careful that we only worship Allah. Allahumma lakul hamd, and to nur the sameh wa'at, you will already remain fi him. Walafil hamd, and to fayamu sameh wa'at, you will already remain fi him. Walafil hamd, and to al-haq, wa wa'adu ka haq, wa ka'ulu ka haq, wa liqa'u ka haq, wa jannatu haq, wa naru haq, wa sa'atu haq, wa nabiyuna haq, wa muhammadin haq, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.